All right, we are going to talk about what it takes to make, uh, a, I'll call it an ultralight Tika rifle. Uh, it may be for some purposes just a lightweight rifle, but we're going to talk about what it takes to make it as lightweight as possible. So in front of me, I've got some of the parts that uh, you're going to want to uh, think about using. So we're going to weigh a few of these um, and have the scales in front of the camera right now but I can give you uh, the lowdown as uh, as we go here so um, just starting at the at the action itself and some of the improvements that you can make you've got in front of you here a Tika T3 X action this was a uh, this is a factory Six creed, six five creed more that was uh, started at a twenty four inch barrel was cut down to twenty inches. So cutting that barrel length down is going to be one of the first things you can do. The simplest things to uh, to shave a few ounces. Uh, factor about about an ounce per inch. Um, I can get you some more exact specs in a, in a different video. Um, the uh, the Barreled action obviously is going to be coming out of your out of the stock itself. The stock is going to be the next place you can shave some significant weight. This particular stock, this bare stock, there's no butt pad on it. It's been uh, the the sling stud's been taken out. The bottom metal has been removed. There's nothing else about this stock that you could take off without starting to cut into it. And it's weighing in at one pound, nine ounces. So we'll call that 25 ounces. Uh, buying an aftermarket stock like this Stockies Carbon Fiber VG Tika stock, uh, dimensionally it's gonna be the same. It's gonna be a drop-in fit for your barreled action. Uh, it's gonna, depending on the model you buy, this particular one has more of the vertical grip style. It's gonna be a little bit lighter weight. It's gonna save you a few ounces right off the bat. This one, bare, is coming in at one pound, five ounces, which that four ounce savings, that's quarter pound. Just double check. Yeah, one pound, five ounces, so 20 one ounces bare stock. <clears throat> You've got a few of the things that were taken off um, that can make a difference. This is the factory uh, Tika uh, butt pad, if you will, uh, on the end of the stock. It's weighing in at 2.7 ounces, including the screws, whereas the pad that comes with the stockies is going to be just Two pound, two uh, two point four ounces versus two point seven ounces. Not a not a huge, significant difference, but uh, every little tenth of an ounce is going to count. Um, I was going to show you real quick one quick modification that you can make that it will save you quite a bit of weight here. You got these two ounces to go, two and a half plus ounces here for these. Uh, these foam butt pads you can make your own out of some some sort of a dense foam and you'd have to figure out a way to attach it i i've done it with something as simple as duct tape you can depending on the the type of foam maybe it could just be glued on this little piece of foam here is literally a tenth of an ounce okay so there's a couple of ounces there that if you're creative you can get you can take off okay so Another significant savings is going to come out of your bolt. So this is a this is a factory bolt. Um, it's weighing in. This is for the uh, you know, for the short action factory bolts weighing in at about eleven point three ounces. And I would say this also in a in a short action or in a in a in a in a the medium, the medium action, I should say, uh, diameter bolt. So this would do your 
65 Creedmoors, your everything but your Magnum, and it would be different compared to your your uh, 223 sized uh, chamber bolts. Anyways, this one, like I said, the factory at 11.4, this modified bolt at 7.6, okay? Significant weight savings. Now, to make this bolt what it is, you've got to remove the factory bolt knob. You've got to, this one in this case is a is an MTM gear titanium titanium bolt knob, which just that alone, so that's coming in at 0.4 ounces, where the factory steel is coming in at 1.4 ounces, a one ounce difference just in the bolt knob itself. Then you've got this fluting work. This fluting work is uh, something you'd have to have custom done by a, a gunsmith that, uh, that knows how to do it. Uh, this particular fluting pattern is called the X pattern from a company called LRI. Uh, typically you'll see something more of like this spiral fluting, which isn't gonna take off quite as much weight. Just comparing these two, again, you've got the 7.5 7 ounces versus 8.6 ounces, so a 1.1 ounce difference between these two fluting designs, everything else being equal between those two bolts. <clears throat> okay, then you're going to start looking at, uh, you're going to start looking at some, some minutiae here, some details. Um, you've got, and we're going to switch over to grams because these are, these are much smaller here. Uh, you've got your, your typical steel uh, recoil lug in, in the and the T3Xs is going to weigh around 20.3. This is a stainless version from Mountain Tactical, but uh, we're talking 20.36 grams versus a titanium recoil lug at 11.36 grams. So almost, but not quite half, uh, these, t these titanium recoil lugs are coming from Atlas Works. Uh, again, every gram is going to add up, you know, grams add up to ounces, add, ounces add up to, uh, add up to pounds. So, uh, the next kind of smaller, but yet every, every gram is going to count is your, is your action screws. The, the steel action screws that are going to come with your Tika are going to be about 15.36 grams versus a titanium set of action screws is gonna if I can get to sit on there 8.35 grams okay you've got your uh, your standard or, or factory uh, the the bolt that holds the trigger in place that bolts the trigger to the action is a little steel bolt that weighs six grams versus the titanium version of that same bolt is 3.18 grams. And then you got your bolt stop, which the factory bolt, the factory steel bolt stop is 6.1 grams versus the titanium version. Now, I'm gonna give you a couple of different weights here. That's 5.8 grams, not a huge savings. I would say that's probably one that I would, I would, I could argue not, not doing to save that, uh, not even, not even uh, half a gram. If you are using your uh, smaller, the 223 based action. So if you've got a 223, um, and a 223 bolt here, the bolt stop is going to prevent that bolt from. And I, let's see where's my 223 blur on action here. The, the bolt stop prevents it from coming back as far as it would with, say, your Magnum or your standard bolts. And there's different bolt stops for your different caliber, your different sizes of uh, sizes of cartridges. So this one that came, uh, this little titanium one from 
company called High Velocity Hunting out of Australia. Uh, it's got two little bolts, two little screws that you can take out. So if you've got both of them in there, that's going to essentially put the bolt stop in the position that your factory uh, 223 bolt stop is going to put you out. You take the, the first screw out and then it puts you in line with the uh, with the the standard action and you take the, the second screw out and then it's in line with your magnum action bolt stop positioning. These little screws, told you we're talking minutiae here, are 0.65 grams, okay? So you take off, uh, you take one of those off and then you've got about a gram savings in your standard action between the, uh, the titanium and the, and the standard or the, the factory. Um, so those are uh, the majority of your, uh, the improvements you're gonna be able to make. Um, some, some improvements you can make just by buying the right, uh, the, the right setup to begin with. You know, if you get the fluted uh, factory Tika stainless light, like something like Cabela's would sell, or excuse me, Sportsman's Warehouse would sell, uh, it's gonna be, uh, a couple ounces lighter than your non-fluted version. Um, if you cut that barrel down to 16 or to 18 or 20 instead of the the factory length, again you're going to save you're going to save ounces there. Um, there's uh, there's obviously pros and cons with cutting your barrel down. Um, you're going to lose some velocity, um, but uh, I found that uh, in that 223 barrel with this, uh, this is a factory uh, super light uh, profile with this fluting uh, and a 223 is, I'm still getting 2770 out of a, a factory uh, 77 grain uh, TMK loading from Standalone Armory. So I did it, that same combo, that same bullet, it was giving me closer to 2,900. So I did lose, you know, 100, 125 feet per second um, for going to the shorter barrel length, but it still serves my needs, still meets my needs. And now I have a more compact package. It's lighter weight, it's more compact. When I add a suppressor on the end, it's, you know, it's no longer, honestly, than it would have been the factory length barrel to begin with. Um, this one here, Cutting off the four inches of the uh, of the six five Creedmoor, uh, again I lost uh, roughly a hundred feet per second or a hundred yes a hundred feet per second. It was it was about twenty about twenty six with factory uh, about twenty six fifty I say about with factory uh, one forty three ELDX and it dropped it down to about twenty five fifty. I was able to gain all of that back just with uh, hand loading, and so it's. Uh, you kind of have to pick your poisons in that regard, but you can typically, you know, kind of have your cake and eat it too, and and trying to save some of those uh, save some of those ounces if you're if you're creative. So that's the the nuts and bolts of the parts and pieces you could consider taking apart. Um, uh, while I don't have it here, and it's just an easy thing to you know to swap out if you have the the old style plastic uh, bolt cap uh those are obviously lighter weight than the than the steel or uh even the titanium ones um so those would be those would be a, a great option if you can grab them they're usually pretty cheap if you can find them so uh any questions put it in the comments below thanks